Hey, Elliot here from Bow River Trail Fitters, and you know, when it comes to large western rivers like the Bow, you know, it can be a little intimidating for people just starting out. Even if you can identify your classic fish holding water like, you know, deflections and seams, buckets, undercut banks, and bow is never going to bend to your will. Let's say you want to go out and catch fish on a dry fly and that's all you're prepared to do. Well, you might spend all day and go fishless. But if you come prepared to adapt to the situations, to the types of water, to the seasons, the water flows and the hatches, you'll be able to identify those pieces of water that will allow you to apply those techniques. And if you're willing to change up in the day, you will ultimately find more success on the bow. So even as you become accustomed to identifying those really good fish holding pieces of water, it becomes very important to be able to identify what techniques work best in those types of water. Is it, is it classic streamer water? Is it good nymphing water? Or is it good dry fly water? Well, today we're gonna to show you a few pieces of water and identify why we would approach them the way we do. This is what we would call a really good quality piece of streamer water here. What we have here is riffle dropping into a bucket and it's more of a trench that starts narrower up high here and it flows down and then it really starts to widen out. As you can see as we progress down here through this piece of water, the water slows somewhat but it still maintains that really nice walking pace so that when we cast out and let our, our streamer sink and start to swing across the current, there's enough movement in the water that will keep that fly moving even with the heavy sink tip that we're using. So I'm going to cast pretty perpendicular to the current and allow that fly and that sink tip to really dig in and sink. It's going to come tight and I'm going to allow it to just swing across that broad piece of water that we've selected here. And remember, while I have to wade away from the bank to be able to clear the line behind me and make my cast, I don't want to wade out so deeply that when the fly comes towards the bank it stalls before it gets all the way in. Once it gets in, I'm going to add some action to the fly by retrieving and just giving it a little bit of that erratic motion that will trigger a strike. The fish can be laying right here, so eventually I'm going to start to move in just a little bit. But for now, I want to keep making my casts progressively longer so that I can cover this piece of water. And again, I don't want to be too far away from the bank so I can effectively fish this nice piece of water very close to the bank. Okay, so nymphing. What kind of water do I look for to do that? Well, this is a great example right here. What we have is a, a very deep seam, very close to the bank. However, it's also a very narrow trough. So, you know, the window of presentation is narrow. The fish are going to be in a very defined spot. So a few passes with a nymph rig should put you in front of any fish that are in there. So another great piece of water for nymphing is something just like this. What you have is the main river here coming over a riffle, over a gravel bar, and dropping down into a deep bucket. Now, you have the main seam that we just spoke about coming through here, and they kind of join. So what you have is a bit of a funnel for food in here, and everything that's coming down this bank and this channel will be focused right in this spot. So once we fish this nice seam right here, we're going to go down and fish over the ledge of the gravel bar and into the bucket. When you see this type of water right here, you know, that shimmering nervous water with the small little peaks on it, that's an excellent water to fish. It's, you know, we can see that there's enough depth in there for the fish to feel secure, but there's also enough flow to keep food coming at them at a constant rate, and it's not too much flow that they can't just sit there and rest at the same time. So we've tried some streamer fishing today and some nymphing, but you know, fishing just wasn't too productive for us today. So we decided to wait it out, wait for evening, and find a nice bank where we might have a chance at some dry fly fishing. So when you're fishing on the Bow River and you see a consistently rising fish, absolutely fish a dry fly to them. However, right now we're waiting and we found a nice bank here. It's an undercut bank, it's grassy, it's got real easy flow to it. And it's the kind of bank where you can just scan all the way up and you can see any fish that moves. The water is perfect. We know that the fish are gonna slide in. They're gonna be behind those deflections in the bays, just looking for caddis to float overhead. So the caddis have become very active right now. They're on the water. Now we've chosen this bank here because you can see straight up it for a couple hundred feet. So any fish that rises, you'll be able to pick them out, approach them and stalk them very quietly. 
So thanks for joining us today. We hope you found this video helpful in identifying those various types of water on the Bow River and the techniques we apply to fish them effectively. Check out some of our other instructional videos on our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like and join us for more how-to videos on the Bow River in future.